The gospel for today places in front of our eyes the infinite love of the heart of Christ towards each one of us sinners. Did you know that even if you were the only sinner on the face of this earth, even if you were the only one, our Lord would still have come down to die only for you. He would have done it all only to save your soul. He loves each one of us, each one, with an infinite love. Each one is special in His eyes. My brethren, how can I even try? How can I even try to speak about this wondrous mystery of the love of God for us? Of the love of God towards these poor and miserable creatures that we are. Words will never be adequate. They will never be enough to describe such a love. And the reason, and the reason is that love, love itself, cannot be described, but it has to be shown, manifested. And we could say that even for God Himself, words are not enough. But He wanted to show. He wanted to manifest His infinite love for us. <clears throat> and in the first place, we can see this love of God for us in the fact that He created us. <clears throat> My brethren, we have to know that from all eternity, each one of us, and I mean each one of us, was present in the mind of God. He knew you. He thought of you even before you existed. From all eternity. <clears throat> and it was precisely because He knew and loved you that He brought you into existence. In the book of Psalms, we read, Omnia quecunque voluit feshit. He created all that he wanted and only what he wanted. So if God created you, it is because he wanted you. If you came into existence, it was not by chance, not an accident, but it was because He wanted you. It was because He loved you. God always possessed all happiness in Himself from all eternity. So He didn't need to create the angels. He didn't need to create mankind. He didn't need to. 
but He created. Why? Not because He was in want of anything, but because He wanted to share His infinite happiness with us. So it was out of love, out of generosity, that God created us and everything else. So we rational creatures could have a share in His own life. That's the God we have. He created us to share with us His own happiness. And this love of God manifested in our creation can be properly called mercy. Right from the beginning, it was mercy and always mercy, even before the fall. Because mercy is simply the name of the love of God towards us, poor creatures. To bring us from nothing into existence and to keep us into existence, that's mercy. His love for us was always mercy from the very start. Mercy is the love towards the poor. Mercy is the name of the love of God towards us. Now, if we can see the mercy of God in our creation, we can see it much more, much more, in the work of our redemption. My brethren, when the first man sinned through the instigation of the devil, what did God do? Did he give up? on His plan to give us eternal life? Did He give up on His plan to share with us His infinite happiness? No, He didn't. God didn't give up on us. He could not suffer sin to destroy His plan for us. He could not suffer the devil to give the final word about the work of his hands. And that's why he came down. The one who created everything came down to restore everything. He became a man in order to take upon himself the chastisement we had deserved. He came to die our death. And by this means, to make it possible again for us to have eternal life. In the work of redemption, we can see in the most stunning way the love of God for us. Words could not be enough. So he wanted to show his love for us in a very clear way. In order to leave no doubt about it. As you know, actions speak louder than words. And everything that our Lord suffered was a declaration of His love for you. 
in every suffering he had to endure, you are in his mind. He thought of you. It was because of you in order to save your soul. No, his love was not a joke and will never be. It was real. It is real. He died for the love of us. And when we talk about the mercy of the Lord, we talk about the love of His sacred heart for us. The sacred heart of Jesus is the image which incarnates His infinite love for us. His heart is the image of His love of His mercy. So if in the work of creation we see the mercy of God, in the work of redemption we see what we could call the great mercy of God, which is a more abundant measure of His love. The mercy of God brought us into existence, but His great mercy came to deliver us from hell, which we all had deserved because of our sins. Usually, I don't like to use modern examples, but I remember that one time a priest told me that the work of God in our lives is similar to the GPS. If we miss the right exit, the GPS will always find a way to make us go there where we have to go. Now, because we missed the right exit, it may take more time for us to arrive at our destination. That's true. However, the GPS will find a way. And so the priest told me that the providence of God works like that. Sometimes we miss the right exit. Sometimes we fail. Sometimes sin enters in our lives and we go the wrong way. But God is there, like the GPS, trying to make us go back to the right road. And if we follow His voice, we will arrive at our destination. We will arrive in the kingdom of heaven, no matter how many wrong turns we have made in the past. Christ came to guide us back to the place where we were supposed to go. To the place where we were called to go from the very beginning. He came to guide us to heaven. And He's always working on that. We just needed to obey His voice. We just needed to be faithful. And we will get there. What an amazing love in the work of creation. And what a, super, what a super abundant love in the work of redemption. And all of that, my brethren, all of that, only to have each one of us with him in heaven. So I ask you, I beg you, 
have no doubts, even for a second, about the personal love of God for you. Understand once for all that if He didn't love you, He would not have made you, period. But if He made you, if He wanted you to exist, it was out of love. He wanted you because you are precious in His eyes. But that was not all. He also came down from heaven. He became a man in order to pay for our sins so we could have eternal life. What else could you ask for? What else could He do in order to prove His love for you? He has done everything. He died for you. So my brethren, remember to think about His infinite love for you every single day of your life. Let it be the first thing that comes to your mind in the morning. His infinite love which created and redeemed you. So let us learn to be grateful to this merciful God that we have. Who doesn't treat us according to the multitude of our sins, but according to the boundlessness of His mercy, the great mercy of His heart. So let us be grateful. And the best way to be grateful is to be faithful. Let us pay love with love, knowing that words are not enough. But real love has to be shown. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.